I'm originally from New York, born in Manhattan, grew up till I was in first grade in the Bronx, and then we moved to the suburbs, Bethpage, Long Island. And then I left for State University of New York at Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, which was like the Berkeley of the East. It was times of a lot of turmoil um, on campus, but it was a great art department. I had sculpture and painting. It was just phenomenal. And then after that, I focused on painting. I majored in painting in uh, Buffalo State University. So I it was kind of floundering around. Then I got into NYU uh, film school. I was working on a little animated film. So I went to film school. I got a master's in film, got an MFA. My heart wasn't in film. I'm not really that story oriented. So um, my passion was, you know, one frame at a time. I kind of drifted doing odd jobs and then my father passed away and I moved to Beverly Hills with my cousin and lived there with her for a couple of years and did odd jobs and started painting after years and years in the early 90s, I believe. I started doing mosaics in the late 80s or something and then I started doing hand building with in North Hollywood at Berman Kills. Hand building was great and that's what I've been doing for, ever since. I've been developing and painting and doing ceramics. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I love art. It's, it's my whole life and I love the community. I have friends and artists friends and it's, it's just great. This is a stoneware, it's a high fire clay. It's great for outdoors with a steel rod and steel base. And I just try to keep the whole work cohesive, keeping the colors simple with a lot of blues and turquoise and using a lot of brush strokes. And the whole thing with faces, it's about humanity, people's reactions and living as a group, diverse backgrounds too. A lot of my faces are androgynous. I don't know if, even if they're male or female, some of them. Identity has been an issue with women's movement and sexuality and all that. Like I'm influenced by Matisse and Picasso and Viola Fry too, you know, if she, she did monumental stuff. And doing a totem is a great vehicle because I can get large and it's manageable. This is my homage to cats. I became a cat person inspired by cats and it's a great vehicle. I have my cat. Again, I'm using the blue and white. It unifies the piece, having the pattern. And then I have all these different colored cats and birds and, and flowers. It's kind of upbeat. To me, cats are very human. They let you know what they want. They're wonderful companions, to me anyway, as long as they don't scratch you. <laughs> I love doing heads. It's been a vehicle for me for years. I kept it cohesive with a palette, just simple, like three, four colors, black, white, and blues. And then this is gonna go on top. So my fabricator is gonna come and put a steel base. But again, I love patterns, so I have stripes, and I kept it fluid. I'm very painterly. Basically, I'm a painter who does sculpture. The magic of glaze, like you're not really sure how it's going to come out. That's part of the fun. Sometimes it's not fun, but then you can always kind of use it or redo it.
This is my next totem, and I will stack these up, on one on top of another. And not, I'm not sure the order yet, but I think this is how it's going to go, and I have another one in the works because it wasn't tall enough. I like to make them at least six feet. And this is, this were different options for tops, but I decided to go with this blue and white. I have cats. cats and pretend flowers. So, and, and I love these, I love that orange and the blue and I just love those colors. And these are little wall pieces I did. So, little ones, little. This is a beginning of a next totem. Uh, I, this is bisqueware. It's fired. Where um, the other ones are drying. This is for my next totem, and I'm deciding which colors to use. I know I'm going to have blue and white dots because that's what I'm doing. I'm probably going to make this an orange cat, and I'm deciding whether to go real bright or just keep it white. And this too, um, I, I can choose. I can put blue. So when I, I'm not there yet, I have to stack them up with the greenware, well, with the stuff that's fired. It's going to be fired next in a few days. It's ready. It's, it's dried and ready to go in my kiln. So I kind of did a self-portrait. I've been doing that. So here, um, eyes shut. And I was uh, like awareness and not a sleeping and awareness and peace. And then, um, you know, more aware of what's happening. I have different ways of working. In this approach, I make an abstract shape, then I draw on them. But I always have this thing about heads and faces and this I kept very simple and figures and this is a fun way for me because I can really use my imagination and this is a mid fire it's a hoggy porcelain it's a cone five with this particular thing you can get very graphic and it it doesn't drip as much so the line is clear this is more imaginative for me and I, I've done a whole bunch of these I go in and out because sometimes I need to relax and just play and sometimes I like to have a, a specific, because I get bored just doing the same thing over and over again.
this is my Love, Sex, and Aphrodite series I did in 2014. I had a huge show, a wonderful show at the Hamilton Galleries on Ocean Avenue with Warren Long and Ohm was next door, Ohm Bleicher. I did a whole series of women on pedestals and Aphrodite leaning on herself. Thought it was about like it being an independent woman even way back. So here's one, Aphrodite leaning on herself, sort of like a Marilyn Monroe type. Here's her being worshipped with uh, a lot of sexual uh, stuff and death always lurking in the background. But uh, again, here she is the center. Oh, this was Aphrodite coming out of the shell. If I did a whole big painting of that. Of, um, and then here's, it was based on uh, this Greek. I, I, re, I redid a Greek uh, vessel. The images on a Greek vessel, I interpreted it this way. It was like they were having orgies back then with as an angel. So I had, I used a lot of gold and texture. I used gold. And here's another Aphrodite leaning on herself in red. Aphrodite leaning in pink. And to me it was interesting because after I did the shape it became to me uh, very phallic. So it was almost like uh, unconscious with this like a big phallic thing with her in the middle. This is uh, the birth, I reinterpreted the birth of Venus and um, it was more literal and I threw a cat in. So that was fun. Rising out, being adored. I did variations on the same theme over and over, over and over, um, from a Greek v vessel. And I forgot the guy's name, but you know, sexual kind of stuff. This is more from my imagination. And I also was into Klimt, uh, if you could believe it. I have a lot of paintings that was influenced by Klimt. These are cats. Cat series. Cats, cats. I, I did a party scene. About 2018. A lot of texture, interior. Thank you.